Eh, bienvenidos a este, a este webinar sobre pronunciation. Hablar un poquito de, de lo que es la pronunciación del inglés, ¿no? Que para nosotros, los hispanohablantes, es algo que nos cuesta más adquirir en un idioma. Eh, especialmente porque eh, ya cuando hemos desarrollado nuestro, nuestro, nuestro oído, nuestros órganos de articulación, ya están adaptados a nuestro primer idioma. Y, y hay muchas características del inglés que van más allá de los sonidos y que realmente nos eh, vale la pena prestarles atención para poder acercarnos o apro apro aproximarnos a lo que es el, eh, una entonación, un, elementos eh, más complejos que los sonidos. Entonces, en este, en este webinar vamos a ver esto. Eh, no, no nos vamos a enfocar en sonidos, nos vamos a enfocar en, en, en elementos más amplios, que son la entonación, por ejemplo. So, uh, I would like to switch over to, to English now. And I understand that uh, most of you are CDUB students, right? Come from the communication level program. So, I would like you please to to write your name in the chat box and tell me, for example, I'm blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm in CL1, CL2, CL4, any CL students. Can you type, okay, your name? For example, I'm gonna start like this. For example, okay, I'm, I'm Felipe. Okay, I'm a student in CL4, for example, okay? I don't know if somebody wants to to follow up on this, okay? Any any CL students uh, in this in this session? Let's see who is here from our communication program at CDUP. Let's see, maybe Janet Orlando, communication level of students, yes or no? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Let's see. Okay, please, let's start with this question. Uh, what do you find the most difficult about pronunciation? What do you find the most difficult about English pronunciation? Can you type in the chat box? Or if you want to participate, yes, feel free to, to open your mics. What do you find the most difficult about English pronunciation? Let's see, let me type the question, okay? What do you find the most difficult? or challenging about English pronunciation. Milagros, okay, oh, Mila, you're a CL10 student. Welcome, Milagros. Milagros, what do you find the most difficult or the most challenging about pronunciation? Milagros, Janet, Orlando, any, any ideas? All answers are right at this moment, huh? All answers are right. I just wanna know your opinions. Let's see. Any, any, any ideas? Come on, type in the chat box. What do you find the most difficult about pronunciation? Is it the sounds? Is it the intonation? Is it to identify uh, the words, the phrases in English? What do you find to be the most difficult or the most challenging aspect of pronunciation? Any ideas? Okay, Jose, the past tense of verbs, uh, Rommel. Okay, thank you, Rommel. Orlando, the challenge is looking like, oh, sounding like a native speaker. Okay, Orlando wants to sound like a native speaker. Thank you, Rommel. Thank you, Orlando. Uh, Jose, Jose, phrase, oh, Janet, the phrasal verse for you, the pronunciation. Okay, yes, uh, Janet. Uh, speaking of phrasal verbs, yes, they do have, the stress on the second component. Like for example, wake up, we say uh, wake up, right? Uh, not wake up, uh, wake up. Okay, usually phrasal verbs have the stress on the second component. Good. Okay, thank you guys for your answers. All right, uh, as I was telling you from the start, from the get go, uh, for us as Spanish speaking people, uh, we need to, uh, I think that our biggest challenge is to go beyond sounds and look at the bigger picture, which is the intonation, sentence stress, rhythm. Those are really challenging aspects of pronunciation that require training. 
okay? Especially we need to, to get used to those sounds, to understand those sounds, to be aware of those sounds and to realize, okay, oh, wow, that's, that's how you pronounce them or, how, or that's the reason why you pronounce them that way. Let's see, there's another answer here. Luz, how to make sounds clearly and correctly, milagros, when there are different pronunciation types for the same vowels, for instance. Yes, it's true, it's true, milagros. Okay, thank you for sharing your answers. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's see, let me minimize this. Okay, our next slide. We're going to, in this webinar, we're gonna look at an important aspect of pronunciation that sometimes we may not pay much attention to, which is intonation. When you hear the word intonation, what comes to your mind? <laughs> what is intonation for you? What does intonation mean? Any ideas? What about in the chat? What, what is intonation for you? When you hear the word intonation, mm, what comes to your mind? Let's see. You don't have to write it in the chat, but just I would like just to think about it. Just think about it, okay? Intonation. Let's see. Okay, here is a, a very uh, easy definition. Intonation is the music of language. As you know, English is a very musical language. The most popular songs around the world are in English. And I think one of the reasons is because English is very musical. Uh, unlike Spanish, English has like a lot, lots of highs and, and lows when we stress important words or when we, when we don't stress them. But there is a pattern there, there is a rhythm. And in this webinar, we're going to learn a little bit more about this pattern, okay, this pattern, because there are rules. Believe it or not, there are rules. There are rules, there are pronunciation rules that we need to take into account. So. Having said this, okay, intonation, the music of language. Okay, let's take a look at our next part. Okay, here you've got uh, some lines and numbers uh, below or above uh, some syllables and, and some notes right there because we're gonna connect these, uh, these symbols, these notes with English. So that's the idea. Now, in this webinar, we're gonna learn some about intonation patterns. Uh, and this is something I would like you to do at home, okay? At home, I would like you please to, to speak, okay? So this has to be a, a, an interactive uh, webinar. I would like you to, to practice at home, okay? So make sure that there's nobody else in the room, close your doors, close your windows, okay? And speak, speak as, at the top of your lungs if you want to, okay? But you have to say it, all right? So we're gonna practice intonation. Identify the type of sentences, follow the formulas and say the examples. We're gonna learn some formulas, okay? But not some physics formula, formula, so don't worry about that. Okay, some intonation formulas. Okay, we're going to look at patterns, okay? The patterns are divided into three columns. You'll see three columns, okay? column A for type, column B for formula, and column C for example. So you're gonna see in this presentation, these patterns, type, formula, examples, type, formula, and examples, type, formula, and examples, okay? So that's gonna be uh, the same along, along the presentation. The lines over and under the words indicate pitch level. I would like you to remember this word. This word is very important, pitch. What is a pitch? What is a pitch level? A pitch level represents how high or how low a sound is. Okay, how high, how low a sound is. Okay, so those are the pitch levels. So you're gonna, okay, tune that level, all right? Fine tune it. There are four pitch levels. Okay, the first one indicates a low pitch, low, low. Number two, a normal pitch. Number three, a high pitch. And number four, an extra high pitch. So remember these four, four levels. One for low, two for normal, three for high, and four for extra high. All right, 
So are you following me so far? Yes? Is it clear so far? Yes? Are you following me? Give me a yes or a no, please, in the chat box. Is it clear? Okay, repeat. Okay, Roma. Okay, repeat. Sure. Okay, Roma. Thank you for your honesty. Janet, yes. Okay, I'm going to repeat it just uh, briefly. So, uh, okay, so we're going to pay attention to patterns, patrones, patterns, patrones. And these patterns uh, will be represented by pitch levels. Okay, pitch levels. We, we will explore four pitch levels. Number one, for low pitch, or the sound low, 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 low. Number one, that's number one. Number two, normal. This is normal, normal. Okay, normal pitch. Number three, high pitch, high, high. Number four, extra high pitch, extra high. All right? Now let's move on. Okay. Look, let's practice this. For example, we got the, the two, three, one pattern. Mm -hmm. Two, three, one, two, three, one is what we call rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling intonation. And the two, three pattern represents rising intonation. For example, look at this, sen this sentence here, okay, or expression. The first one. There are two, okay? What I would like you to do is to practice. How would you say the first, the first sentence? How would you say it at home? Say it at home, okay? How would you say this? How would you say it, okay? How would you say it? Now, listen to me. Good morning. Good morning. One more time. Good morning. So we start at number two, normal, number three, high, and number one, low. Good morning. Good morning. So that is rising, falling. The second one. Okay, what about the second one? How would you read it? How would you read the second one? I'm going to type it in the chat, okay? How would you read this one? Now, listen to me. Are we on time? Are we on time? Now repeat, okay, repeat at home. Are we on time? Now, please listen and repeat. This needs repetition, okay? Pr pronunciation requires repetition. Listen and repeat, please. Good morning. Good morning. Are we on time? Are we on time? So do you know these formulas? Yes or no? Did you know the formulas? For rising, falling, two, three, one, and for rising, two, three, do you know the formulas? Yes or no? Is it the first time for you? No, okay, Janet is telling us no. Well, Janet, let me tell you, there are formulas. <laughs> it's the first time, okay. All right, yes, we're gonna learn these formulas, Janet. We're gonna learn them and I would like you to practice at home, okay? You're gonna follow me, you're gonna follow me, okay? Now, if, if there is a volunteer who would like to, to turn on their mics, fantastic, no problem. Let's continue. So this was just a warm up, calentamiento, warm up. Okay, we're just warming up on this cold afternoon weather. Okay, the, uh, we're going to practice a little bit more now. Okay, here we go. Okay, please pay attention. Focus. Are you there? Are you there with me? Yes or no? Are you following me? Let's see. Let's see in the chat. Are you here with me? Yes or no? If you're not, okay, Jose, Enrique, fantastic. Yes, yes, Roberto, Ana Maria, fantastic. Because it requires concentration, okay? Now, number one, statements, requests, commands, and WH questions. When you have a statement, a statement is a sentence that is not a question. It's not a question. It's, it's, a, it's a sentence that states something, that says that something is true or false, okay? That's a statement. 
A request is when you ask somebody to do something for you or a command. And a WH question, it's an information question. So what is the formula for statements? Requests, commands, and WH questions? It's a two, three, one. Remember, two, does two represent a low, normal, high, or extra high pitch level? Who remembers, please, in the chat box? Two, what does two represent? Normal, low, high, or extra high? Jose is telling us normal. Uh -huh. Do you agree with Jose that two is, represents normal? Yes? Normal, Ana Maria. Yes. What about a three? What does a three represent? What does a three represent? High. Janet is telling us, Jose is telling us high. Good. High. And what does a one represent? Uh -huh. Yes, Ana Maria, high. What, number one, Jose and Roberto is telling us, Janet, low. Yes, number one is a low. So this is a normal high low. Normal high low. So please, at home, listen and repeat. Listen and repeat, okay? It's like this. Look, it's raining. One more time. It's raining. One more time. It's raining. Number two now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Number three. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Good. Any volunteers? Maybe somebody who wants, who wants to open their mics and try it? Any volunteers who would like to practice to read number one, number two, or number three? A volunteer? I don't know. Roberto, Ana, Janet. A volunteer who would like to open? To open. Oh, hi. I see two hands here. Let's see. Aha, uh -huh. Janet, and then Lionel. Janet, please. Good evening, teacher. Okay. It's raining. Let's go. What time is it? Very good, Janet. Thank you. Lionel, yes. it's your turn. Okay. Listen to me? Yes. Listen to me? Perfect. Okay. Number one. It's raining. Let's go. What time is it? Good. Thank you, Lionel. You see the formula? What time is it? Let's go. It's raining. So we have a statement, requests, commands, and WH questions. We got this formula. So you got the first formula. Write it down. Write it down. Okay. Or take a picture. Take a picture of the formula. Take a picture of the formula. All right, now let's move on. Second type. Now we've got yes, no questions, okay? For yes, no questions, it's a very simple formula. It's a two and a three. Remember, two is a normal and three is a high. So for example, you've got here two examples. How would you say them? Practice at home before we look at the, at the lines. How would you say these examples? Now, now uh, see and check and listen. Aha. Uh -huh. Did she answer? She's not here. You see? It's a question, it starts at the two, normal, and then it goes up. Did she answer? She's not here? No, please, listen and repeat at home. Listen and repeat at home. Did she answer? Did she answer? She's not here? 
She's not here. Good, now I need volunteers. Who would like to practice now? Okay, first we've got Janet and Lionel. Who would, like to, who would like to be a volunteer now? Raise your hand, raise your hand or open your mics. Great, okay. We got here, okay. All right, all right. Lionel, let's start with you, all right. Okay, uh, number one is, did she, did she answer? And number two is, She's not here, here. Uh -huh. One more time. She's not here. Uh, Lionel, can you repeat that? She's not here. All right, all right. Okay. She's not here. Good, good. She's not Thank here, you. here. Thank you, Lionel. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you. Orlando. Please turn on your mic. Your mic is off. Hello. Hello. Number one, did she answer? She's not here. Ah, she's not here. She's not here. Good. She's not here. Good. Thank you, Orlando. Somebody else. Somebody else. Another volunteer. <clears throat> Enrique. Remember to turn on your mic. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, did she answer? She's not here. Uh, she's not here. She's not here. Good. She's not here. Good. Very good. You got it. So when you have, thank you. When you've got, when you've got yes, no questions, it's a two and a three. Now, number two, doesn't start with the auxiliary, but it's it's a yes, no question because she's not here. Yes, she is, or no, she's not, all right? Good, so we've got two types so far, okay? We've got the formula for statements, requests, commands, and WH questions, and we've got a formula for yes, no questions too, okay? Yes, no questions. Oh, let me, my chat light just turn on, okay? I'm not fit. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, aha, uh -huh. Romel says, in question, the last word always says the intonation too. Is it true? Uh -huh. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's a real question, uh, it will be three. The, the intonation will go up. If it's a statement, it will go down. It will go down. Yes, yes, Romel, yes, that's true. Okay, let's continue. Are you ready to continue? Yes or no? Or you have fallen asleep. Have you fallen asleep already? Yes or no? <laughs> I hope not. I hope you're still awake, okay? Listening to the music of English. Okay, now, okay. <laughs> now, what I would like you to do, let's see, okay. Let's continue with more examples. Now, we've got here more people. Let me check. Giovanna, Jose, uh, Luz, we got Orlando, okay. Who else is here? Ruth, okay, maybe we can hear from them in the next examples, all right? Let's see, let's continue. Okay, next, contrast and comparisons. Ooh, now it's it's getting a little bit, a little bit more challenging, all right? I don't wanna say complicated, but a little bit more challenging, all right? You got this formula when you have a contrast and a comparison. Here you are contrasting or comparing uh, two pieces of information. And the formula is at three, two, four, one, or a four, two, three, one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, why the difference? Well, it depends on the emphasis, right? The emphasis you wanna place on a word. There are two sentences here, please. How would you read them? How would you read them out loud, okay? Practice at home, practice at home. Try to connect the numbers. Okay, are you ready to check the, the lines? Let's see. Look, this is how it would look like with the lines and the accents, okay? Listen to me. 
his Arabic is better than mine. One more time. His Arabic is better than mine. The last time. His Arabic is better than mine. Number two. She sounds like her mother. She sounds like her mother. One more time. She sounds like her mother. Okay. Here, what we're doing, we're comparing. And we are stressing those words that carry them the most meaning. Now, please, at home, listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. Okay. Let's practice. Let's practice this. Make sure that nobody's listening. Okay. Close your doors, close your windows, and let's practice. On three, okay? One, two, three. His Arabic is better than mine. One more time. His Arabic is better than mine. Number two. She sounds like her mother. She sounds like her mother. All right. So any volunteers who would like to practice, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. I would like to hear. Remember, practice makes perfect. We need to, and this is a great opportunity to get feedback. All right, Giovanna, excellent. Please, Giovanna, we're, we're all ears. Hi, good morning. Um, his Arabic is better than mine. Um, no. The next is, um, she sounds like her mother. Ah, again, it's stress on the first one. She sounds like her mother. She sounds like her mother. Good, very nice. Lionel, it's your turn. His Arabic is better than mine. Uh -huh. Now, stress on you. His Arabic is it's... better than mine. One more time. His Arabic is better than mine. Good. The next one. She sounds like, like her mother. Good stress. Now, the, the other words a little bit faster. She sounds like her mother. She sounds like her mother. Okay, good. She sounds like her mother. Very good, Lionel. Thank you. Enrique, it's your turn. Okay. His Arabic is better than mine. She Good. sounds like her mother. Uh -huh. Again, she sounds like her mother. She sounds like her mother. Good. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Somebody else who would like to participate? Rommel. Rommel. teacher. His Arabic is better than mine. Uh -huh. She sounds like her mother. Good. Now, Rommel, a little bit faster. Now, when you speak, like, she sounds like her mother. She sounds like her mother. Good. One more time. She sounds like her mother. She sounds li like her mother. Good. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rommel. Uh, in English, uh, remember that this is music, right? And music goes like high and low. But in the middle, we try to connect the sounds. Like, she sounds like her mother. Like the melody is like a wave, okay, that flows. All right, very nice. Okay, now, interesting. We have, we know three formulas already, okay, for three types of sentences. The first one, statements, requests, commands, WH questions. The second one, yes, no questions. And the third one, contrast and comparisons. Do you want more or that's it? That's enough, Felipe, no more? <laughs> or, or you want more? Let's continue or that's it? Some more or that's enough, Felipe? That's enough, thank you so much. One more? Yes or no, yes. let's continue. Okay, yes. one more, Janet says. All right, let's continue from me. All right, okay, let's continue, let's continue. We've got more than one, all right? If you, if you stay, of course, let's see the next one. Okay, we've got this one, series with Anne. 
Aha, uh -huh, we got this formula for series. We got like two, three, two, three, two, three, one. Remember that? Two, three, two, three, two, three, one. So this is like a sequence, right? When you have a list of things, a list of names, uh, we got like a like a two, three, two, three, two, three, one. For example, let's let's take a look at this one. How would you read it? Think about connect the formula. Now let's see the let's see the lines. Aha. Uh -huh. Listen and pay attention. We replace novels and poetry. One more time. We replace novels and poetry. You got like a two, three, two, three, two, three, one. Now, please, at home, listen and repeat. We replace novels and poetry. We replace novels and poetry. And the last time, we replace novels and poetry. Any volunteers who wants to practice? <laughs> All right, we got hands up, fantastic. All right, let's start off now with Janet. Please, Janet, off you go. <clears throat> oh, your mic is off. Your mic is off, Janet. Oh, okay, excuse me. We replace novels and poetry. Excellent, thank you. Lionel. We replace novels and poetry. Ah, oh, poetry, poetry. Hello, can you poetry. hear me? Okay, one more time, Lionel, one more time. We replace novels We replace novels and poetry. Good, thank you. Orlando. Thanks. We replace novels and poetry. Excellent. Ana Maria. We replace novels and poetry. Excellent. Enrique. We replace novels and poetry. Nice, Giovanna. We replace novels and poetry. Good, good. Nice, so you remember that when you have a, a list, we got like two, three, two, three, two, three, one. And, and we got a one because that indicates that we are finishing the sentences. That's, we, we are finishing the sentences, all right? Okay, let's continue. Maybe next time we can hear from Franny and Jose, all right? And Milagros, Ooh, there are more people. That, and some Corey, okay, we can hear from them. I'm from Ruth as well. Okay, we got time, we got time. What time is it? What time is it? Two, three, one. <laughs> okay, it's six, 10, almost. All right, we've got a couple of more minutes. Let's continue. Oh, okay, this is my favorite. Tag questions. Tag questions in English are very common. They are very common, but they can be tricky because the intonation changes depending on your intention, what you mean, all right? So if it's a real question, the formula is a two, three for real questions, all right? Like yes, no questions, two, three. For example, look at this example. How would you say it? Okay, now let's take a look at the lines and the, and the accents, the accent marks. Ha, huh. look, listen and pay attention. His name isn't Jones, is it? Uh -huh. It's a real question. One more time. His name isn't Jones, is it? Is it? Is it? So here I'm asking a question. All right, this is like in Spanish when we say, o no, o no es así, okay, hace frío o no, ese o no, in English is called a tag question. And when it's a real question, because we are asking someone about, about something we don't know, okay, our intonation is rising. 
His name isn't Jones, is it? I need a volunteer now. I don't want to be talking here. I want to hear you. Volunteers, who wants to practice this? Come on, raise your hand, raise your hand. All right, all right, I see, I see some hands up. All right, let's see, Enrique, go ahead. His name is St. Jones, is it? Good, very good, Enrique. His name is St. Jones, is it? Lionel. His name is St. Jones, is it? Uh, is it? Okay. His name is in Jones. Is it? Good. His name is in Jones. Is it? Good. Prami. Good. His name is in Jones. Is it? Good. Very good, Prami. His name is in Jones. Is it? Is it? Is it? I can't remember. Good. Somebody else who has raised their hand? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. It's time to practice. All right. Now, we're going to take a look at that question, but this time when it's not a, a real question, but you expect agreement, which means that the answer is 90% yes, okay? It's, I'm, for example, it's cold, isn't it? Yeah, of course, Felipe, it's winter time. It's six in the evening in Lima right now, and it's pretty cold, pretty damn cold. Okay, but when you have like this intonation, like a tight question when you expect a positive answer, okay, uh, the formula is a 3-1. For example, how would you say this sentence using the formula? Now, let's, let's check. Look, it would be something like this. It's a nice day, isn't it? One more time. Listen and repeat at home, please. It's a nice day, isn't it? It's a nice day, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? It's a nice day, isn't it? You see, it's a three and a one. Because it's not a question, guys. It's not a question. We are expecting agreement. Because if it were a question, it would be like this. It's a nice day, isn't it? You're not sure. But here you're sure. It's a nice day, isn't it? It's a cold day, isn't it? Volunteers, who wants to practice this beautiful intonation with that question? Ex agreement expected. Raise your hand. All right, all right. We got some hands up. Okay, Lionel, please. It's a nice day, isn't it? Uh -huh. A little bit faster, Lionel. It's a nice day, isn't it? Okay. It's a nice day, isn't it? Good, very good. Janet. Okay. It's a nice day, isn't it? Good, good, thank you. Somebody else, Orlando. It's a nice day, isn't it? Uh -huh. Isn't it? Isn't it? One more time, Orlando. It's a nice day, isn't it? It's a nice day, isn't it? Good. Giovanna. It's a nice day, isn't it? Excellent. Yeah, isn't it? Good, guys. Very good. You got it. You got it. All right. You see, English, pr pr English pronunciation has patterns. And one of the patterns... Uh, is for intonation and and this will help you once you identify the patterns you're aware oh this is it okay and then you start practicing practicing all right you've got time for one more yes or no yes of course all right that's the spirit that's the spirit fantastic i'm with you guys let's continue next one okay the next one is called focus focus and this okay actually there's no formula here but it depends on where the voice rises applicable to any pattern now this depends on the focus you want to place on a word okay for example if you have this question okay and you want to focus let's say for example 
on they, so you, your voice will rise starting on they. Usually like would be like, did they buy the house on Oak Street? Did they buy the house on Oak Street? So the focus is on what word? What word is the focus here? Listen, did they buy the house on Oak Street? What is the focus? Maybe you can type it in the chat, in the chat box. What, what is the focus? What word is the focus? Listen again. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Yes, Janet, very good. They, the focus is on they. So if that word is your focus, you start stressing it, okay? So the pattern start changing when you start saying this word. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? And this is called focus because we are focusing, as we said before, on a specific word, they, not we, not you, not he. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? All right, now, what about the next one? Here, the focus has changed. All right. Now listen and repeat at home. But first, let's practice the first one. Sorry, we, we, my bad, my bad. Let's practice this one at home, okay? Listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? One more time. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Now, the next one, the focus has changed. Now, listen and repeat. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Now, buy, not rent, not lease, uh, not uh, uh, burglarize, <laughs> okay? Not break into, no buy so did they buy the house on oak street now i need i need a volunteer i need a volunteer to help me here practice who wants to be my volunteer okay leonel very good leonel all right leonel leonel let's practice the first one first okay so leonel please what i would like you to do is just a sec okay practice this one first on three one two three Okay. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Uh -huh. Now, listen and repeat, Lionel. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Okay. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Good. Now, number two. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Very good. Okay. All right. Are you ready for the next one, Lionel? Okay. All right. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Uh -huh. Good. Thank you, Lionel. Very good. Yes, here. Look, it's, we start at a two. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Okay. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? The house, not the apartment. Okay. The house, not the car. Well, not a car. It's not a car, so it should be apartment or house. Sorry. Sorry about that. Did they buy the house in Oak Street? All right. What about the next one? Listen. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Not on uh, 21st Street? Not on uh, Palm Street? Not on uh, Chair Street? No. Oak Street. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? So you see, this is called focus. So the, the focus will de determine where you place the stress. All right. So uh, let's practice this. I need another volunteer. Who? Thank you, Leonel. We appreciate it. We need another volunteer. Who wants to be a volunteer to practice focus? Who wants to be a volunteer? Raise your hand. Come on, do it before somebody else does it. Raise your hand. Who wants to practice? Let's see, let's, to practice focus, focus. 
Janet, all right, let's practice, Janet. We're all ears on three, okay? One, two, three. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Good, let's continue now, Janet. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Continue. Did they buy the, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Good, and the last one? Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Good, you see? You see, those subtleties in English make a huge difference. When you start placing the stress on the right word, using the formulas, oh wow, okay, your intonation, your pronunciation changes, has an, an, uh, a, a, an immediate impact on the listener. It's like, wow, that's good intonation. That's good intonation. All right, what about, okay, the answer. Again, okay, it depends on the focus, okay? Uh, oh, Giovanna has raised her hand. Giovanna, just give me a second, okay? You will read this one, okay? But let me present it to you first. For example, this one. Did they buy the house in Oak Street? Yes, they bought that house. They bought that house. Please listen and repeat. Yes, they bought that house. Yes, they bought that house. Now let's change the focus on bought. Did they buy the house on Oak Street? Yes, they bought that house. Repeat, please. Yes, they bought that house. Now let's change the stress, the focus, sorry. Did they buy that house? Yes, they bought that house. Please listen and repeat. Yes, they bought that house. One more time. Yes, they bought that house. And the last one. Oops, sorry, I forgot. That was it. <laughs> okay, so I need. Uh, I think it was Giovanna who who raised her hand. Giovanna, wanna try? Yes. Okay. Okay, Giovanna, yes. did they buy the house on Oak Street? Yes, they bought that house. Good. Let's continue, Giovanna. Giovanna, did they buy that house? Yes, they bought. That house. Ah, bought. Bought. Good. One more time. They, yes. Bought they that bought house. that house. Good. And the last one? Did they buy that house? Yes. They bought that house. Excellent. All right. Good. We have time for another volunteer, maybe. Somebody else, just to wrap it up. We're about to finish. Okay, Lionel, uh, uh, Lionel and then Frami, okay? Lionel, okay, yes a second, give me a okay. minute. Okay, Lionel, did they buy that house? Yes, they bought that house. Did they buy that house? Yes, they bought that house. Did they buy that house? Yes, they bought that house. Good. Prami, it's your turn. Prami, did they buy, sorry, did they buy that house? Yes, they bought the house. Did they buy that house? Yes, they bought that house. Did they buy that house? Yes, they bought that house. Good, okay, you see? The, the focus changes and so does the meaning. The focus changes and so does the meaning. Well, it's almost time. I don't want to take too much of your time, but before we finish, uh, let me share with you something important, okay? I'm going to change, switch back to Spanish. Voy a cambiar al español para darte esta información. En el CIDUP hemos sacado recientemente un nuevo curso que se llama Pronunciation Clinic. Y este curso justo busca ayudar a los alumnos a mejorar su pronunciación, no tanto con los sonidos individuales, sino los temas más centrales que van a la, a, al corazón de la pronunciación, que es, por ejemplo, los temas macro, como la entonación, el ritmo, la acentuación. 
Mira, y acá es, es, es esta la pregunta, ¿no sabías que el no tener una entonación adecuada es el problema más frecuente de los hablantes hispanos que estudian inglés? Sí, es verdad. Si no tenemos una buena entonación, eh, se complica la comprensión. Y como sabemos, el inglés es muy musical. Y al, al haber música, al haber sonidos, también hay significados. Una buena entonación mejora tu comprensión auditiva. Y bueno, y el curso busca eso, ¿no? que mejores tu comprensión auditiva. Va a haber mucha práctica, eh, sobre todo en estos aspectos de entonación, ritmo y acentuación. Si es que te gustaría tomar el curso, está, está empezando el 13 de julio, el próximo curso. Es un módulo de 21 horas, tres veces por semana, que va de 5 y 20 a 6 y 50. O sea, no, no recargamos mucho porque sí es, es agotador. Es una práctica que, ago, que agota, pero que te pone en forma, te pone en good, in good shape. ¿okay? El nivel que necesitas para tomar el curso es el pre-intermedio, hablando de CL, si estás a partir de un CL4 en adelante. Y si quieres algún informe sobre el curso, ahí está el correo de contacto idiomas.sanisidro.up.edu.pe Bueno, ha sido un placer. It's been my pleasure to be here with you guys. Very good pronunciation. Very good intonation. I, I hope you took what you expected from this webinar. But remember, put it into practice and sign up for the course. Sign up for the course. That's, that's all for me now. Eso es todo de mi parte. Take care. Cuídense. Take care.